snapped inside of her trip. They got it on video, like she snapped. I don't even know why I'm going to jail. They're the ones who held my son away from me. Well, I watched the video of you grabbing your son around his shoulders. <laughs> Trying to pick him up. I can't hold your hand, baby. Why? Because I'm in handcuffs. Okay, you're something about to stop right here, so Chaos erupts in an Iowa gas station when customers intervene in a family dispute. The ensuing havoc results in an astonishing brawl that leaves the community stunned. But that's nothing compared to the shock that police officers get when they learn that the pandemonium started when a mother violently manhandled her nine-year-old autistic son. The lazy quiet of a September weekend in 2021 is broken when a call comes in to 911 reporting an uproar at a local convenience store. Police department, can I help you? I do the fight up here. Quick trip. How many people are fighting? Uh, well, mom was beating her kid really bad in here. I can't, ma'am. I can't hear you. Something's wrong with your phone. How many people? It's like three, four. And other people, it's the kid from her. And they're all yelling and freaking out. All right. We'll be on the way up there. Even through a poor phone connection, the commotion in the background is enough to alert dispatchers that a bizarre emergency is unfolding at the Quick Trip gas station. Officer Miller of the Des Moines Police Department is first on the scene, and the crowd that rushes to greet him is the first indication that something is very wrong there. This lady's in here you talking to him. Wait, and dragging him around the stores, right? So we tell her to calm down. And then she is just going crazy now. My homie's not in there holding her down right now. Officer! Hurry! Hurry! Get in! Get in here! Oh my god! Somebody better get this bitch to Okay, okay. She punched her and she pulled her and she punched her. Hey! She's throwing everything at me. Place your hands behind your back. I'm not. Place your hands behind your back. I'm not like my son. Place your hands behind your back. Place your hands behind your back. You just struck me. Fine, but I want my son. Okay, okay. No, because that is a bunch of stuff. Place your hands behind your back. Relax. Relax, okay? Keep your hands behind your back. I am behind my back. Okay. And I'd like to talk to an officer now. Okay, I'm here. I want my son. Place your hands behind your back. They're the ones who started it, and I want my son. Okay. The commotion inside the convenience store will make it difficult for police to piece the situation together, but it will surely be easier with this woman secured in handcuffs. What is going on? First of all, I was trying to discipline my son. They okay. got involved. My son is ADHD. I was trying to get him out of the store. They got involved when they wasn't supposed to. I just want my son so I could go home, please. So why, why are you throwing things? You hit me. They're the, the ones who kept getting in my face and would not back off. Leave me alone. Okay, so that's your, that's my, your that's your reasoning for throwing things true. at me. No, and then I did not mean to throw them at you. I just want my son so I could go home because right, I know what the problem outside. is with my outside. son, and nobody doesn't want All to right. stay in the closet. Step outside. Uh, I just want my son so okay. I can go home. Are you here with anyone? Just me and my son. Where do you live? Right behind us, and I would like to take my son home. He has workers. Right now, the workers and I have been dealing with this because he is ADHD. And I would like to get him home from medicine. So can I please take my son home? Stand right here. I just want my son so I can go home. We're going to figure all this out, okay? Have a seat in my car. And I'll be All right. the car. Nobody can confirm. With the mom squared away, Officer Miller goes to check on her son. All right, is everybody else okay? Yeah, everybody's fine. Okay, everybody's fine. You can see the marks on his neck. Hey, bud. Yeah. 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 Hey, buddy, can you talk to me? Okay. Can, I, can you look up at me? His mom's kind of, oh, yeah, you got marks on your neck. All right. Can you sit here for me, okay? Thanks, buddy. The boy is reluctant to talk, but the discolorations on his neck make it more important than ever for Officer Miller to get to the bottom of this situation. You got video of this? Yeah. Yes. Can you show me? The TT got videos of it, too. Everybody yeah. here is going to say the same you literally just sure. walk over to where they was behind the fountain drinks. Like, so what was she doing with her child? Picking. Like, she was like, get up, get up. Like, 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 like taking him up by the neck. He's literally yeah. on his back. He's, he's pulling him by the arm. He like, let okay. him go. And, and, and she's sitting That's there. She's doing loud as hell. Like, I don't give a f 
We wasn't even going to say nothing, but it just kept going on. Like, yeah, like So then we walked back there, and then, yeah, we just tried to tell her to stop, and she started tripping okay. out. Who did she we, assault? Like four or five people. Who did she assault she you? Assault me. She she assault which one of y'all did she push with the door? One of these little Brandon, kids. They call, she no called black a black, black bitch. Oh, like, she just sweet uh, out of control. She assaulted yeah. my, uh, my uh, fiance. Yeah. Was, I had to actually, like, put her on the ground because sure. she was getting way too out of control. I held her down for a little bit. She bit me. She, yeah, <laughs> she I got a video of him holding her down to where she can't do anything anymore. Okay. Because she was really getting out of control. Like. It's already clear that however unhinged this situation appeared when Officer Miller arrived on the scene, the full story is even crazier. But the breathless testimony of the witnesses cannot compare to the video itself. She was like trying to put her hands on these little girls. I don't know where they went. She and squared up with another like, little, girl, little girl. girl. I was talking about I'm gonna punch girl. you in the face. She just kept throwing stuff and throwing stuff. She threw something at me. I she threw something at me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. She did that. That's when I hit her. Yep, okay. Because you don't do that to kids. Nope. I'm not, I'm not with none of that. We wasn't in the wrong. Yeah. No. You're helping this child out. That's what I mean. That's all you you're, you're doing what you should have done. Right. If Officer Miller was reserving the benefit of the doubt for his suspect, this cell phone video has clearly changed things. To the mother currently sitting in the back of his police car, however, the fault lies with everyone else. He just went <laughs> And Brendan has a habit of making everything worse. This is what my son can be. If the mom thinks her son and the other customers are to blame for this incident, she seems to be the only one who feels that way. But then she ended up punching him in his back and then hit me in the back of my head, and that's when I really just took off on yeah, so her. She, my hands she assaulted both of you? Yes, okay. somebody else yeah. had a video. We didn't assault her okay. first. She, yeah. do, you, do you two wish, to, she's going to be going to jail anyway, do you wish to be victims of the assault and testify? I want to press charges. I don't yeah. care. I'm do, you, do, you, uh, what I'm, do you want to go to court and testify? Yeah, and all that? I okay. will. Okay. Yeah. I will. Uh, most too. definitely will. Outstanding. For him. That, yeah. that, that, helps, that helps us yeah. Yeah. That get a little kid, more yeah. valid, so thank you. Yeah, she pressed charges against me. I'm pressing charges against her for hitting me. If they would have backed off, I would have been able to take my son home and go home calmly. But they don't even know the situation. And they think they don't know. And they know nothing about my son. There are clearly two very different views of what happened before police arrived on this bizarre day, but security cameras have captured every moment of the action. Police will soon see for themselves exactly how things went down inside the quick trip, and so will we. In the meantime, the cell phone video is more than enough to disgust Officer Miller. Can you show me where she slams the child on the ground again? It's this video. I don't know what you can see, but... Picks him up under the arms. Picks him up in the air and throws him on the floor. Okay. While she shows her video again to Officer Miller, her fiance shows Officer Peckman how he was hurt in the melee. Do you have any injuries on you from? I don't know what you can see, but. Okay. And then you said she bit you? <laughs> well, she attempted to. I yeah, mean, okay. She didn't get the chance to because okay. I heard it got up the way. But she was pinching me literally like right here. Oh, oh, you can probably still see that. Some, yeah. Some redness, yeah. So when I was walking out the store, she punched me in my back. She punched my girl, and so we just attacked her because that's my lady. Like, ain't, ain't nobody just want to sure. attack my lady. Having gathered statements from the main participants, the cops have another conversation with the woman who started all of this. See if she has a story. And see if she has someone who can come pick this child up. Ma'am, what's your first name? And I can also give you my son's workers. Just as the officers note those down, she utters more strange details. If my son has to go to foster care, I will understand. But I would like to go home so I can talk to his workers and get all of the samples. Please. Sure, we'll get we'll get all this sorted out shortly. What's going on with him today? Brendan, he is ADHD. Okay. Autism on a spectrum. Mood swings. DDMD. That goes along with the ADHD. Okay. His workers are under Orchard Place Diet Center. He is due for his medicine, and he's even got a doctor appointment to get back in school tomorrow because he's been home sick. Okay. And when he does not get his way, which the workers know, he will throw a bit like that in the store. And they told me to carry him out and get him back at home. And that's exactly what I did okay. until they got involved and I tried to tell them they don't know him and they don't know the situation. What's his, what's his first name? Brendan. And his psych meds are at my house right now. As shocking as it is that a mother 
would so quickly volunteer her son for foster care, it's obvious that there's more to this family history than police can unpack in an afternoon. However, a hint of it may come out as Officer Peckman searches Regina for weapons. I'm going to pat you down really quick, so I'm going to have you pop out. Do you have any weapons on no. you or needles or knives nope. or anything that's going to hurt me? Nope. Okay. Because I don't even do that anymore since I've had my son. This is just the first time somebody's involving themselves when they don't know the situation and what I go through with him. And like I said, he is due to meet with three and tomorrow because we're discussing to getting him into focus. So does he stay at Orchard Place sometimes? No, because he's not okay. 10 yet. Okay, I gotcha. He's taken off from the house. Like I told her, he's due to have his next dosage of medicine when right. I get home. I'm going to get the car started. I'm going to get the AC running so you get some air. I'll go ahead and get your keys. We'll get this sorted out, okay? And my wallet's behind the thing. Okay. Oh, my. We're good. We got quite the call here. This is a dramatic understatement, as will become clear when we see the wild quick trip surveillance footage in a moment. But the entire video isn't necessary for the police to come up with some likely charges for Regina Morris. I mean, she straight up picks him up under the shoulders and body slams him on the Yeah, I saw, so that's, I saw the video that's a too. More than Just picking him up and getting him to the car. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Certainly some sort of child I, I think that's something, yeah. Child, right? Yeah. And then assaulting. She's saying, I'll do a simple assault for hitting her in the head, simple assault for whatever happened to her. Pinching and punching and, okay. yeah. I'll call my supervisor see what he wants done. Obviously, someone has to come pick this kid up. She says there's no one to do that. So. Yeah. Before Officer Miller can begin writing up the charges, however, Regina has some complaints. Excuse me, can I say something? These um, ink cuffs are a little too tight because they're hurting my wrist back here. Here, I'll have you step out. I'm going to put you on, make it a little more comfortable for you, okay? Okay, thank you. Which one's the uh, one that's really tight? Both of them are. Actually. All right. Now, I'm going to have to uncuff you for a second, okay? Just be cool, all right? Be cool. They're just digging in my hand. Nope, I got you. And what is going to take place? Because yeah. all I got, his phone numbers are at my house. Medicine's at my house, and I do is have there... a friend who can take me down there. She's in D11. I'll have you step back in. Mm -hmm. So D11? Is this, yeah, do you know the friend's friend, name? Yeah, Donisha. She's the only friend I have at the building, and she will be willing to take him. Okay. Regina's comfort has been addressed, and now there's at least one possible option when it comes to Brendan's care. In the meantime, Officer Peckman tries to get some information from the store's employees. So did you see what happened? That lady came in with her two kids, and she wasn't listening, but she was like, feeding them. Okay. Not just this Okay. Are those cameras? Yes. Okay. Okay. So then those people stepped in, and then from there, just broke the She was scared. I was throwing in. She was supposed to be 23, 23, 23. Okay. Did she damage anything in here? I she just threw all of her stuff. Okay. Okay. Making sense of these chaotic events won't be easy, but there are worse things than putting together a puzzle. Having rescued one of Regina's flip-flops, Officer Peckman tries her hand at a task that's perhaps less unpleasant, but no less challenging, getting Brandon into her police car. Hey, Brandon. Is it Brandon? Hey, bud. Oh, my gosh. You want to come hang out in my car where it's cool? Hey, Brandon, let's take your drink and let's go wait in my car, okay? Okay. Well, these folks need to go, yeah. Um, we're going to have a DHS worker come out and we'll figure out where, yeah, yeah. These folks need to move on with their day, so we're, you're going to come sit in my car and hang out with me. Brendan is content to hang out beside the quick trip for now, and when Officer Miller comes to chat with Officer Peckman, the boy's care is on his mind as well. She says she's got a friend, Denisha, in D11. It's a friend. She's okay with the child going there, but I would want to check with DHS about if that's okay with them. You know what I mean? Is he in the car? No, he doesn't want to go in the car, so I can wait with him outside. Uh, He's actually a little sure. difficult, so... Is he? Officer Miller isn't pleased to hear about his partner's failure, but he quickly learns that she did the best she could. Come over here. Come on. Yeah, come on up, bud. We're going to pick you up. No right. Thanks, buddy. And thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the help. Are we gonna take my mom to jail? Well, we're figuring all this out, okay? 
Would you like to sit in the car so you can at least be cool? Nothing bad's gonna happen, okay? Alright. Let's start doing some other stuff. Officer Miller then moves to deal with Regina, who has some alternative suggestions for how the rest of the day should go. Alright. Am I going to jail? Yes, we have to contact DHS oh, yeah. and see if that's a plan that'll work. What's that? I'd like to go back to my home. I, I know you do. I need to get a hold of the workers to let them know. We're, we're also getting a hold of DHS, okay? We have our own protocols we have to go through, okay? Then I would like to press charges against them, too. Because she's the one who hit me, and then he held me down. So I'd like to press charges against both of them. If I'm going to jail, they need to go. I don't even know why I'm going to jail. They're the ones who held my son away from me. Well, I watched a video of you grabbing your son underneath his shoulders and slamming him on the floor. I was trying to pick him up. What's that? I was trying to pick him up. Yeah, and then you throw him to the floor. Okay. Well, then I'm... I don't know what to tell you, because that's what I saw. I'd like to go home so I could calm down, so I could call my workers. Would you like to speak with my sergeant? Yes, because I would like to go home. I can understand that you're placing him outside the home. I'm willing to do that. But I'd like to go home and calm down so that I could get a hold of the workers to let them know what is going on. It's perhaps not surprising that Officer Miller's sympathies are in short supply. But when Regina's friend Denisha shows up at the store, she too is in shock over what she's witnessed. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Gina f snapped inside a crit trip. They got it on video. Like, she f snapped. They're posting it on Facebook. Damn, that went viral fast. Disturbed by the video, Denisha speaks with her friend in the back of the police car. And they're not even letting me to go home to calm down. Yeah, no, but that video, Regina, this, what happened? They, they got involved and they wouldn't back out of my face either. So they're partly at fault too. Baby, what happened between you and your son? He, he was throwing a fit and I was trying to walk out until they wanted to get involved and made the situation happen. Why did you call me, Ma? You know my you phone's at home. I was trying to call you. I was getting yeah, I was already up here. I was trying to get home with him. Those two people over there wanted to start a fight and got in my face too and made the situation worse. Regina's story doesn't match that of the other witnesses, but everything will soon be cleared up. The quick trip worker have pulled up the security footage, and Officer Peckman goes inside to see what really went down this afternoon. Officer Peckman prepares to watch the footage, and as she watches, so shall we, starting right from the moment that Regina and Brendan first entered the store. Brendan pulls a fast one on his mom and slips back into the store undetected. Brendan, let's go, now. I'm gonna give these people a reason to call the cops. Let's go. Brendan, let's go. Now. Brendan, let's go.
The footage shows Regina throwing her child to the ground, and that will be enough for the police to send her to jail tonight. However, as you'll see, that was only the beginning of the convenience store carnage that tore through the quick trip. Frustrated with how this conflict is going, Regina tries a tactic that's already failed once this day. Unable to get what she wants, it's not long before Regina's rage boils over. The conflict has reached a fever pitch, but if you think what you've seen so far is extraordinary, you haven't seen anything yet. Regina's demands aren't getting her anywhere, but when she decides to take matters into her own hands, the insanity goes to a new level.
As shocking as that was, the exchange has only added fuel to Regina's fire. She storms toward the door, where she's unable to resist having a measure of revenge. Get out! Now! Get the f*** out! Get the f*** out! Get the f*** out! Officer Miller arrives just in time to miss the violence, and back in real time, Officer Peckman has seen enough to make sense of the chaos, or at least as much sense as can possibly be made. Here's your phone back, thank you. Were you able to see on the camera? Yeah, you get a pretty good view, so, yeah. She was in the wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, and he does seem to be somewhat of a difficult child. He's obviously yeah. got something going on, but you know, just pick up your kid and throw him on the ground. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The subject of Brendan's difficult nature comes up again, and it's something that Officer Peckman will become intimately familiar with before the day is done. In the meantime, a tentative arrangement is made to send Brendan home with Denisha. However, that plan hits a snag when Sergeant Vance arrives and decides that it might be wise to cover all the bases. Uh, if the child is going down, we might have to take the child to the hospital just okay. to make sure the child's not injured in any way. Yeah. Since she did finally throw him down. Okay. I know he's probably not going to say he's injured, but we we'll probably need to you know, at least get him medically checked out. And then if the neighbor wants to go to the hospital mm -hmm. and if it's okay with DHS, if they want to work out something with DHS, that's up to him. I'll let uh, the other officer know that she's going to deal with all the kid side of it. I'm just going to get her going. Um, she does want to talk to y'all roll down the window or yeah, you want to open the door. Caught up to speed with what's happening at the quick trip today, the sergeant has a chat with Regina, who still has hopes of avoiding jail. Hi, I'm Sergeant Vance. Oh, what? Separate myself. What's I, that? I am going to separate myself. Right. This is all my numbers at home, and I can't get a hold of nobody okay. because all my workers' numbers are in my phone. And I'm willing to take full responsibility for what I did. It's just I would like to go home if possible tonight because I don't have a way to bond myself out. Yeah. And like I said, I can't get a hold of nobody. And I'm willing to take full responsibility. Anything you guys ask me, I'll do all the court dates, everything. Well, if I have a no trespassing charge for the premises, I'll even take it. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I mean, we're not going to be able to send you home tonight. The prevailing theme of the day seems to be Regina's inability to get what she wants, but there's not much she can do about it from the back of a police car. And despite her menacing deeds, Brendan still longs for her comfort. I can't hold your hand, baby. Why? Because I'm in handcuffs. <laughs> Okay, you need to go. Go, go, go with me. What? I don't want it. I know, baby. It's okay. Do me a favor. Be good, okay? Are you going to be back in the morning? I'm going to try to, okay? Okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It may be impossible to muster sympathy for Regina after all we've witnessed today, but one can't ignore the heartbreak of her child as they're separated. Officer Miller decides it might be best to make sure Brendan doesn't have to watch his mom go into the transport wagon. Okay, how about I just go drive somewhere else so we can get this kid off the side of the car? That's what I was going to do. Yeah. This is, this is not going to be good for them. There's the for the incoming. I know, I know, but mom's got to go. No, he's Mom, we'll oh, she doesn't! She doesn't have to go! Am I good to back up? Officer Miller drives Regina away from the store, leaving Denisha and her friend to deal with her distraught son. At the same time, Officer Peckman gets a curious update from DHS. It probably doesn't meet the criteria for removal if he wasn't injured from being thrown down. <laughs> yeah, she said she'll email me with whatever her supervisor says, but in the meantime, we're okay to figure out how best to get him to Lutheran, and then he's okay to go home with them, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. No! No! 
to my house. Yeah. Oh, I'll follow you guys. I can go over there and meet you guys over there. I got to go home and tell my family. I just kind of like pushed my kids in with someone that was there. Okay. They don't even know what's going on. I just was like, I'll be right back. You know, I had to come and try to help my sister. Arranging for Brendan's care won't be as simple as it seems, but Denisha and the police are doing everything in their power to make it work. Denisha promises Brendan that she'll meet him at the hospital, which helps calm him down, at least temporarily. Once he's seated in the back of Officer Peckman's car with Denisha's friend Angelina, however, his thoughts turned sad. Goodness, Mom. Oh, you know what? She misses you, too. Oh, I don't want it her to be gone forever. Oh. She's going to be there for five years. Regina's sentence is still to be determined, but she immediately makes an impression when she gets to jail. All right. Let's go ahead and start walking right towards that door. Yeah, I caught her short. No. Have you traveled in Massachusetts? No. Have you traveled in Massachusetts? No. Have you traveled in Massachusetts? No. What happened to your head? That's when somebody held me down on the floor at QT. That's so it. like, yeah. So like I said, I can't see my face to see how bad it is. And take medical. Can you look around the female side? Head right through the door. Everything's no. I got, I got that part. Okay. Thank you very much. With Regina's transfer to the jail complete, Officer Peckman and the neighbors have their hands full with Brendan at the hospital. Oh my goodness. You want to eat some of your candy? You got a whole bag of candy here. What? Yeah, I don't want you to break that, Brendan, though, because other people need to use it. Other people who can't walk. Hello. Hello. Make sure people are safe. Hello. Is that okay with you, sir? Hey, Brendan. We can't use this phone. I just want to call mom. Okay. It works. Yeah, I know. I get it, but we can't. I know. You don't, no! hit, don't hit me. No! I know, bud. I can't hit. I always have to manage his behavior kind of as best as I can. Wait, wait. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to break their vending machine. Unfortunately, it's a busy day at the hospital, and it will be some time before Brendan is seen by a doctor. He does, however, get his vitals checked by a nurse, who asks him about his injuries. Are you hurting at all? Okay. Your arm, or what's hurting? Your neck hurts? How bad does your neck hurt? A lot or a little? What is this? How bad does your neck hurt? A lot or a little? A lot. A lot? Does it hurt all the time, or just when you're moving it? Okay. Thankfully, it doesn't seem that Brendan is suffering from any serious injuries, and when Denisha learns that it will be at least three hours before he's seen by a doctor, she decides she can no longer wait. So, due to the time that it's going to take for him to get seen, I'm not going to be able to stand by until he gets seen to figure out like what the results of x-rays and stuff would be. If that's also the case for you, to where you can't wait around for three, four hours, whatever it's going to be, we will just have to call DHS and they'll have to come take custody of him and, and they'll handle it rather than you. So I'll leave it up to you. As it turns out, Denisha doesn't have to choose between staying at the hospital and turning Brendan over to DHS control. Officer Peckman and DHS ultimately decide that it'll be okay for Brendan to wait until tomorrow to get his medical clearance. The child goes home with Denisha and Officer Peckman puts a very trying afternoon behind her. Though Regina Morris was charged with felony child endangerment, her negotiated guilty plea brought it down to a misdemeanor to go along with her two assault charges. On February 14th, 2022, Morris was sentenced to two years in prison for the endangerment charge and two years in jail for the assault charges. Both sentences stand suspended. Court records do not specify what happened to Brendan, but contemporaneous news reports say he was doing well and in the care of the Iowa Department of Human Services. A no-contact order issued against Regina Morris was also lifted on the day of her sentencing. However, details of the protected individual at the other end of this order has not been named publicly in the records.